In this video, I'm going to break down how I made this winter scene with lots of hints and tricks to low poly modeling along the way. If you like what I do, then do check out my low priced low poly courses, which give a much more in-depth follow along guide meant for complete beginners that want to get to grips with Blender fast. You can download a free pack of all the assets in the scene so you can make your own winter scene. And it's got a version for Unreal, Unity and Blender. Also check out my website and playlist on this channel for more great content, links in the description. So I start with the default cube and into edit mode, Alt M and merge at center. And then I've got a single point, make sure you're in vertex mode and then you can extrude outwards a shape of a tree. Then to give it some bulk or flesh, you can add the skin modifier and it does this and then add a subdivision surface modifier on top of that and you get this. Now you can now select your points or vertices and press Control A to scale them. And you can select a few at a time to scale them in just like I'm doing here. Try as much as you can to follow some reference images. So I've got some on a different screen so I can see the shape that I'm trying to reach. Bonsai trees are great reference material. You can copy and paste a section and just grab two vertices and F to fill. So you don't have to keep doing lots and lots. Then you should end up with something similar to this. At this point we can add some leaves and I use just an icosphere. Then go into sculpt mode and just start pulling it around with the grab brush. I do a quick remesh to give it a few more faces, then I can pull it around more easily. And I just continue duplicating it and then creating a new one and twisting it around, reshaping it into this sort of blob of leaves like this. Again, find some images of trees to help you. I select them all, press Ctrl J to join them all together and go across to sculpt mode and do another remesh, taking off all the paint masks and things like that. And I reduce the voxel size to give me a bit more detail and then start going around, smoothing out a bit and adapting the shape slightly. And I just make sure there's no holes in the mesh from where the objects have joined and remeshed. Now a great way to take these sculpts and make them low poly is using the decimate modifier. I always bring the ratio down to 0.1 to start with. And if you've got a slower computer, you can actually apply that, take a look at it, and then add another one if you need to. And I add another one at 0.1. Take a good look around and make sure that's the style you're looking for. You might want it a bit chunky, then go a little bit lower and then apply that decimate. So sometimes when we decimated a mesh, it's not particularly clean. So if you look at an area like this, it's very jaggedy and you've got some sharp points there. You may want to smooth some of those out. If I go to vertex mode with one, I can select all those vertices and come up to vertex and smooth vertices. And you can see that it smooths them out straight away. If I come to this dialog box down here, I can even increase that smoothness a bit if I wanted to. And if one wasn't quite enough, then you can actually repeat this process but 0.5 looks about right to me. In other areas, you might find you have long, thin triangles like this, or perhaps this one in here is even worse. So if we take a closer look at that, it just doesn't look particularly appealing. What you can do about these is make sure you have the merge vertices option enabled there. And if I press GG, I can edge slide that across. So tap G twice, of course. And that's merged those two vertices together and smooth them out nicely. So you can see me continuing around my shape, just smoothing out a few areas that I think are a bit funny looking. And I add the smooth vertices modifier to my quick favorites so it's a bit quicker. I'll quickly show you how I made the second tree. I just adapted the trunk of the first, so deleted some bits, uh, copied some bits over if I wanted to move them around the touch and just extended the trunk out to make it a different style. Again, looking at bonsai trees for inspiration. So we end up with something looking like this. And then once again, I add in an icosphere that I can shape into a kind of bush of leaves. This time I don't merge them together though. So they're all big blobs on their own. This process takes a little bit longer than if they were all one blob like on the other tree. In order to quickly add the decimate modifier to all of them, I add it to one and type in the ratio that I want. Then I select them all and make sure that one that I added the decimate to is selected. And then I can copy the modifiers from that one to the others. To create the snow that goes on top of these blobs of trees, I can select the top faces and I'm using circle select here to paint that top selection. I can then duplicate that selection and then press Alt S to scale it outwards. I also separate it with P so it becomes a separate object. I select the bottom edge and extrude it inwards and then F to fill the face. Then I can go across to sculpt mode and I've got something that's a similar shape 
to sculpt and mold into my snow. This one's for the big tree, so I make some kind of gaps in it that I can show the leaves underneath through. And then I make these kind of drip effects that you can see here. For the tree trunk, I start with a cylinder, but only with 12 sides and slowly build up the shape just by extruding and pulling areas out in a nice simple way. When I'm doing the roots, I take two faces and extrude those out. I choose two because you can easily make that into more of a circular shape. If you choose just one face, you've only got those four edges and it always looks like a rectangle. I pull it round and distort it a fair bit to give it that organic natural feel. You shouldn't be afraid to experiment with these things. Uh, sometimes you get things wrong and you can just delete those faces, add them in again, pull them around and see how it looks. Again, having some good reference images really helps with this sort of thing. And slowly the shape emerges and you end up with a lovely tree trunk. To model the stag, I found a side view on Pexels. So this is free to use and you should easily be able to find this yourselves. And the whole technique I'm using here is the same as my low poly animal video, which goes into a much more depth link in the description. But it's basically taking a plane and tracing the outline of the shape. You start with the body so you don't do the legs just yet and then you extrude that out and mirror it. Make sure that you've applied your rotation before you do that and that the origin point is in the center and you can kind of round out the shape so it's the right sort of size. Once you've got that then you can extrude out a pair of legs like I'm doing here. Make sure you've got a face in between them so they're not stuck together of course. Of course I can't quite see how far they go down in the reference images but that's fine I'll just make it up as I go along here. And you can see that I'm tidying up the shape a little bit as I go as well, making it more rounded out. Once you get to this point, it's basically just a case of slowly adapting the shape, extruding out areas where you need a little bit more polygons, and then slowly your model will appear more realistic with each polygon you adapt. I had a reference image of the front of the face on a different screen so I could kind of get the shape from that. I didn't really need to trace around that. I got the general idea from the image. Every now and again, you might want to jump back to the reference or side view just to make sure that things are working out. For the eye, you just extrude a face in and adapt the shape accordingly. And do constantly keep moving around your object to make sure you see it from all the different angles in 3D. You can see that mine was a little bit fat there, so I had to bring it in from the front view. And the legs are kind of splayed out a little bit too far back, so I brought those in as well. So obviously it's okay to start moving away from the reference image, especially if your legs aren't completely in line. Don't be afraid to draw in and cut in some new faces with the knife tool. I've got other tutorials about that. A handy playlist is my low poly modeling playlist and you can get all these tips from there as well. It's important that you don't add too much detail too early on. So you keep it nice and simple to start with. And now when you get to this point, that's when you can start adding in some loop cuts and things like that. Do keep looking at your reference images. So for the ears here, make sure they're coming out from the right position in the head. It's not as easy as it may seem. For the antlers, I did actually go back to my reference images and just copy out the shape of those. But I did also look at my front view reference as well to make sure they were kind of the right shape. And as you can see here, it's kind of emerging and looking like a stag. Now, when it comes to rigging the animal, I use the Rigify armature. So you need to go into the preferences and make sure the Rigify add-on is enabled. And I just used the horse and adapted that to my stag. I also set the viewport display so the armature is in front of my mesh, so it's easier to position my bones. There's lots of bits of the horse mesh I didn't need, like the mane and the tail, and I deleted a few bones. You can get a really detailed, complex meta rig out of this, but you don't need it. I just adapted this one slightly. I did add some IK to the feet because it's much easier to position them if they've got IK on the legs. And of course, you could see me there just parenting the mesh to the armature and checking that it was all working. This is where I add the IK. IK stands for inverse kinematics. It's just a really clever way of rigging and it's really helpful when it comes to feet. I did need to tidy up the mesh with a bit of weight painting. You go into object mode, select the armature and then select your 
object. And then you can go into weight painting mode and control click on each of the bones that you want to change the weights for. And you can see I needed to change the weights for the horns so they weren't affected by the ear bone. I kind of did this the long way around. You can actually turn on normalize, which I remember just there. And that way when I paint a weight of one onto the horns so they're attached to the head bone, it will delete any weights from any other bones. It was really only the horns that needed changing with the weights, so I didn't have to go around the whole mesh adapting the weights. So the last bit is making the landscape, and you can see here, it's a very similar method to making the other items. I start off with a simple plane and extrude it out until I get to this shape here that I start sculpting away at. And you'll see me decimate it in the same way later on. I make these kind of simple rocky inserts that I can overlap the snow. It's just a simple cube that I've moved around with the shape and extruded and extended. I make sure it's placed under the snow like this and use the grab brush and the snake hook tool as well to kind of pull the snow over the top of it. I thought it'd be a good idea to get a little bit of color in here as well so I could kind of make out whether it's working or not. And at this stage, I'm just using EV to get an idea of the colors, but I'll skip across the cycles in a moment. It's slowly coming together, so I'm a bit more confident now that this shape is kind of working. It took me a while to get to this point, really, with lots of experimentation. But now I'm starting to pull the snow around and use that kind of style of the snow overlapping the rocks like they are here. And again, I'm using a bit of a drip effect there as well, as if the snow is melting over the top. This took a lot longer than I was expecting, actually. I was thinking this was going to take me about half a day, and it ended up taking me about one and a half. In terms of the actual time creating, it didn't take too long, but it was more the idea formation that took a very long time, really. There was lots of experimentation and failed attempts and things like that. I'm sure I'm not the only one that does that, uh, sort of overestimates how quickly they're going to do things. Let me know in the comments if you have that sort of problem as well, but I seem to have it for every single project, thinking it's going to be much quicker than it actually is. You can see as well, I'm creating rocks in the same way as I did the branches for the trees and that kind of snowy effect going over the top. And I just use this one rock over and over. You can get away with a lot if you just rotate it round and twist it. It's surprising what you can get away with with the single rock being used over and over again. It really doesn't look the same once it's rotated like this. At this point I'm fairly happy with how it's looking so I look at the lighting and think about an HDRI in the background. I thought a nice wintry early morning would make a lot of sense. The HDRI is not available in the pack because it's not mine to give, but you can obviously download one for your own scenes or use a skybox if you're using Unity or Unreal. And you can see me here deciding on how low I want to go with the decimate modifier, so how low poly I want the final scene to look. I kind of went with a mid poly in the end, but it's all about style. It's not really about how well it functions these days within Engine. You can get away with an awful lot of polygons, so it's more about the style that you want it to look like. And also you can probably see that I adapted the origin point of these shapes. So I've joined them all together and I'm moving the origin point so it's right at the bottom. Then when I scale it and resize it, you can see that it grows from the bottom so it's much easier to position. And I can use it for snapping as well. So it all makes sense to have that origin point at the bottom. At this point I start bringing in the different objects and obviously the stag in the center there. And I start to position the camera as well. In order to texture the stag, I just use material slots. So you just select different faces and then assign them to a material slot with a different material color. And you can see that if I need to, I just cut out a different section, like the front of the snout just there. I needed to make that all black, so I just cut out a little bit further to make sure that was possible. It does add a few polygons, but again, doesn't make a lot of difference. I can't edit it too much because that would affect my rigging and weight painting. I have three different colors in the end, a sort of lighter brown, a darker brown, and black. I also posed the stag and in the end added some slight animation to it. I don't show that process because you can kind of get the idea from me just posing it here. I would say it's important to pose your characters when you are showing them off and it gives them an element of character as well. And now you can see that I'm just finalizing the camera position, making sure things are sized in the correct way. It doesn't have to be proportional because you're kind of looking off into the distance. So the trees might be a little bit smaller in the background than they should be in real life. But again, that doesn't matter too much. 
And because I changed the camera position slightly, I edited the pose very slightly as well, just so they kind of work together. And one of the last things I do is I rotate the HDRI in the background so the sun is right behind the stag like this. And again, just make some minor adjustments to the camera position and the items. So there we have it, a nice winter scene. Hopefully you enjoyed the process and learned a few things. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.